Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with, with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. And Happy New Year to all of you. It's good to have you on a rainy New, new Year's Day. Um, and and uh, I want to thank Carolyn Hamill for coming here today and, and playing for us. And, and that first selection, she didn't actually play. That is actually a recorded uh, prelude that, that um, we've arranged to have um, among maybe some others for today as well. Um, I do have several things, and I will open the lectern up for other announcements, but there, there are some reminders and some things I want to mention to you this morning. Uh, first of all, um, I want to point out in the, in the bulletin that th it is that time of the year that Sharon will be putting together the annual report for next year. So for those who have committees or for um, th the committee reports or for corrections on names and addresses or phone numbers, uh, please note that and get that to Sharon in a prompt way and then she'll have that for for our publication of the 2017 annual report. And we did have a consistory meeting this past week. On Thursday night, we had a very nice meeting and several officers were selected and, and elected. And um, next Sunday, we will install all of the, the new officers. And, and I'll just give you a, a, a preview, but uh, Mrs. Donna, um, Mrs. Rhonda Ronlidge is will be serving as the president of the consistory for 2017. And so we thank Bob and, and Rhonda and all those who have served us so faithfully. And, and of course, we have uh, other officers who will be installed as well. Um, now, next week, too, we will have a joint Sunday school meeting um, at 945 and part of the purpose of that joint Sunday school meeting is to honor Dr. Rob. So we're going to have a breakfast and, and a, a little program we'll, we'll put on. And so um, 945 uh, in the fellowship hall. Um, also, I want to mention that next week, January the 8th, Sunday, uh, about 3 o'clock, we plan on um, uh, taking down the 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 Advent decoration. So for those of you who can come out on Sunday and, and help out, um, that would be good. And I'll try to remind you next week. Um, there are a couple other things coming up this week. <coughs> Choir will resume on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Mrs. Kathy Whitley will be our interim choir director and we'll start with choir practice this Wednesday. So. For those of you who have been involved, I, I hope you'll, you'll return. And for those who haven't been involved, you know, it's a new start, a new year, and, and something you can get involved with. And then this Tuesday night, we'll have our Bible study, 7 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. And, and you'll, the text will be from Mark 1, and it will be concerning, actually, the baptism of Jesus. And so you will see the Jordan River probably near the spot where Jesus actually was baptized. Um, you'll see some scenes from the desert around there, as well as Jericho, which is close to where Jesus was ba baptized. So that's some of the things that I had to, to mention to you. Um, Rhonda, do you have any announcements? Any other people with announcements come forward too? The youth are going to crank back up next Sunday with a youth meeting from 3 to 5. So parents, if you drop off for the youth meeting, you can always come help with decorations. Right, May? Yeah. Yeah, so plenty of help there if parents would drop off their kids and help with the decorations too. Um, also, white lights. If you have any white Christmas lights that you do not need anymore, drop them off in the youth room downstairs. Uh, we're trying to prepare a little bit for the decorations for the Valentine's dance. Um, Trinity, just want to remind you, next Sunday you have devotions for youth meeting, and the Maxwells have refreshments. Um, the youth meeting next Sunday, we will try to plan the lock-in, snow tubing, the Valentine's dance, 
and also the circus for the little ones. And maybe some of the big ones might want to go too. So we'll see. Um, let's see, I have some candles to add today. In memory of Paul and Doris Bost, and in memory of Ralph and Sue Campbell by Donald and Judy Bost, in honor of Wayne Bost by Donald and Judy Bost, in honor of their children and grandchildren by Donald and Judy Bost, in honor of Judy Bost by Donald Bost, in honor of Annie Bell Brown by Donald and Judy Bost, in honor of Uncle Jack by Donald and Judy Bost. And we had several they filled in in honor of their church family by Donald and Judy. And a candle in memory of John Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Zeb L. Bost, Mr. and Mrs. C. M. Brown by Annie Bell Brown. Good morning. I just wanted to remind, um, I was going to say women, but I guess men could be included, that now's a great time of year to start planning your bazaar baskets. There's Christmas items on clearance. There's Thanksgiving items on clearance. You can even find some Halloween. So if you would like to um, put a bazaar basket together, now's a great time of year, especially for the holiday themes. And if, if you want to make a donation to buy some of those um, discounted Christmas, Thanksgiving, or even Halloween, let me know. I'd be happy to, to pick some up. I'm always looking on the clearance aisle to see what we can find. And then uh, for anybody that's a committee member, part of a committee, or a Sunday school class, now's the time to sign up and plan for your first Sunday meals. We've got a sign-up sheet up. Um, it's a great fundraiser. I think last year, um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, we averaged out about 400 per event. Um, some of the success includes naming your fundraiser, what the monies are going to. Some of it may include some of the meal, a heartier meal tends to generate more. Um, we would like to ask church members to consider a $5 donation per person. Of course, that's entirely up to you. We love the company and the devotions, but if those of you that lead committees and Sunday school classes, if you could just start looking at the list and signing up, that'd be great. Thanks. I just want to say one more thing about choir practice starting on Wednesday night. Um, you do not have to be able to read music to sing in the choir. Uh, we would love to have anybody who would like to help us sing. Um, as you can tell, I won't be singing too much for a while, but um, anybody that would like to come out, we're going to be doing some things to begin with that's mostly unison so that you won't have to learn a part, but I would uh, hope that all of you would come out that are interested. Thank you. Well, if there aren't any more announcements, let us begin with O Come, Let Us Adore Him, verses 1 and 2. Let's rise.
gather together at the turning of the year. A year like every year. May we come to this hour to find renewal in our hearts, open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive your word for us. And let us sing together, Go Tell It on the Mountain on page 258. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth from everlasting to everlasting. You have taken us through 2016, and you bring us into 2017. So we ask, Lord, during this service that you would be with us, and that you would be with us through this year as we travel. Lord, we ask for your blessing for your inspirations and your blessings, not only on these moments that we're here together this morning, but through this whole year. And you are the one who taught us to pray this prayer uh, as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. And I would like to ask um, deacons to come forward so we can have our offering. And, and I'll read the call to offering as they come forward. The Magi paid homage to the child, offering gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. May we too bring the gifts of our lives and offer them in joy to Jesus Christ. And our offertory is, is in our bulletin, verses three and four of come, O oh come, let us adore him.
Let us pray. Lord, we lift up these offerings to you and we ask that you would bless them and the hearts that have, have freely given them. These things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And you may be seated. Um, this morning we have, for our children's message, Mrs. Lucille Patterson. I'll give you a hand. I'll, I'll give you a hand. Here, grab a hold of me if you want. I've got one desire, and that's to go across the road to that big bank in front of my house and see how far I can push this wheelchair down it. <laughs> you want to just hold that up? I ne what I need is a hole in my ear so I can stick this thing through there. <laughs> what I'm going to do is tell and read together the story that I found in this chicken soup book it's one of my favorite stories, The Night the Chimes Rang. Your mom and daddy probably know this, so they don't need to listen if they don't want to, okay? Now listen, if you have any questions, ask me when you get through, when I get through, okay? Uh, a long, long time ago, a magnificent church stood on a high hill in a great city. When lighted up for a special festival, it could be seen for miles around. And yet there was something even more remarkable about this ch church that its than its beauty, the strange and wonderful legend of the bells. <coughs> at the corner of the church was a tall gray tower, and at the top of the tower, so people said, was a chime of the most beautiful bells in the world. But the fact was that no one had heard the bells for many years, not even on Christmas. It was a custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring to the church their offerings to the Christ child. And there had seen a time when a very unusual offering laid on the altar brought glorious, glorious music from the chimes far up in the tower. Some said that the, that the wind rang them, and others said that the angels set them in swinging. But lately no offering had been great enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Any questions so far? If you have any questions, let me know. I might can answer them. Now, a few miles from the city in a small village lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. They knew very little about the cute Christmas chimes, but they had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve, and they decided to go see the beautiful celebration. The day before Christmas was bitterly cold with a hard white crust on the ground. Pedro and his little brother started out early in the afternoon, and despite the cold, they reached the edge of the city by nightfall. They were about to enter one of the great gates when Pedro saw something on the snow near their path. It was a poor woman who had fallen just outside the city, too sick and tired to get in where she might have found shelter. Pedro tried to rouse her, but she was barely conscious. Shh! It, it's no use, little, little brother. You will have to go alone. Without you, cried little brother. Pedro nodded slowly. This woman will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. Everyone has probably gone to the church now, but when you come back, be sure and bring some help to help her. I will stay here and try to keep her from freezing and perhaps get her, her to eat the roll I have in my pocket. But I can't leave you, cried his little brother. Both of us need not miss the service, said Pedro. You must see and hear everything twice, once for you and once for me. I am sure the Christ child knows how I would love to visit, worship him, and if you get a chance, take this silver piece of mine, and when no one is looking, lay it down for my offering. In this way, he hurried the, his little brother off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears of disappointment. The great church was a brilliant place that night. It had never looked so beautiful. 
when the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the walls shook with the sound. At the close of the service came the procession with the offerings to be laid on the altar. Some brought jewels, some heavy baskets of gold. A famous writer laid down a book he had been writing for years. And last of all walked the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. A great murmur, murmur went through the church as the king took from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and laid it on the altar. Surely, someone said, we will hear the bells now, but the cold wind was all that was heard in the tower. The procession was over, and the choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly the organist stopped playing. The singing ceased. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church. As all the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly but distinctly the sound of the chimes in the tower. So far away and yet so clear, the music seemed so much sweeter than anything ever heard before. Then they all stood up together and looked at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bells. But all they saw was the childish figure of Pedro's little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and little Pedro's laid little Pedro's piece of silver on the altar. So that's the story of why the chimes rang. You know, it's not, and not how much we give to God, but it's the spirit that we give it. Sometimes if we give it in a, in a, in a manner that I don't think God would be pleased, we say, well, I have to give my tithes today. We don't have to give. God is pleased with us if we'll give willingly and gladly, okay? So that's what little Pedro's brother did. He took the piece of money that he had and laid it on the altar for the Christ child. Now, you have any questions? You don't have any questions? Must have done a pretty good job, huh? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lucille. We'll get it to him later. Um, well, let's turn our, our uh, time to the pastoral prayer, and, and I will take prayer requests for this time. Is there any, is there any uh, one or any event that we need to uh, lift up in prayer today? Yes, Bill. Oh, uh, Bill, what's her name again? Okay. Uh, I saw another hand. Yes. Okay, Jim, uh, Jim Jones, and refresh my memory. Did okay. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, other prayer prayer items. Okay, other requests? <clears throat> well, let us pray. Lord, you, um, praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your house. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given to us, namely the highlight of Christmas, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, you have been mindful of us 
when we have not been mindful of you. When we have been disobedient to you and unfaithful to you, you have been faithful to us. And so we praise you and thank you. Again, we ask for your blessing on this year ahead and that you would um, help us to walk along this, this road that we call the Christian life and that you would incline our hearts unto your way and that you would speed our steps in your path. We pray for your blessing on this church and we will formally install the officers next week, but we pray for all those who lead and serve in our church. And Lord, you have told us that we are all leaders. We all have a responsibility. So we ask, Lord, that you would guide our hearts to be attentive to your your will and to your direction in our lives, that we might see those things that, that would be pleasing to you and that we could do and, and serve you. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those who are sick and suffering, and we remember some of our dear friends, brothers and sisters and family in, in our list today. Lord, we remember Lillian Weida, who is suffering from cancer and, and other illnesses, and we pray for her. We pray for Bob and Donna Rummage, and Bob in particular is very sick. We pray for Jim Jones, who's in the hospital, and, and we remember Eddie, who has, has improved a lot, but I know Eddie's not feeling too good. So we pray for Eddie and, and these individuals and others who are in our midst or who are close to us. Lord, we ask that you, the great physician, would give them physical healing. And we pray, Lord, for all of us who uh, are in need of, of being uh, more healthy, so uh, spiritually. So we ask, Lord, just say the word and these people will be healed. Just say the word and we will be healed. We pray for those who are having difficulties in, in, in any number of ways, and we pause for a few moments so that individuals may offer a prayer in silence to you. Lord, we ask for your blessing on our great nation um, this year ahead. We pray that you would bless us um, and bless our leaders, give them insights, give them um, integrity, give them uh, good judgment. And we pray for all those who serve our local neighborhood and our nation in some form or fashion uh, represented by a uniform, and we pray for their safety. For those who are far from home, we pray that you would bring them back to us safely, Lord. <clears throat> These things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> our hymn of worship is joyful. Joyful, we adore you. Let's rise to sing this on page 271.
Please be seated. And our scripture today comes from the beautiful prophet Isaiah. Uh, we're going to hear from chapter 61, verse 10 through 62, verse 3. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with gar garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Please be seated. Well, today, just one week after Christmas, we're going to talk about joy at Christmas and beyond. I delighted, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Well, we've talked about it here. Real Christmas is rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ, who we celebrate on Christmas Day as being born that day. You know, on Christmas Day, we can say what Isaiah the prophet proclaimed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. But, you know, we're not alone in our joy. Jesus Christ has joy in redeeming us. He shows us the way. Um, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So on Christmas Day and the Christmas season, we get a hint of that feeling of joy uh, of Christ when we give. And that's the, the lesson he, he's told us or he's mentioned. Uh, it is better to give than to receive. Um, he gave his all for us. And then we practice the, his example. And we give gifts as well. We gave gifts. Um, and we get joy from giving gifts. Some of you have children. Some of you have grandchildren, and you know the joy that you receive when they open their gifts. There's joy there. There's joy in doing things for people, maybe special things during the Christmas season. And so we are in the image of Jesus Christ, and we experience joy as he experiences joy in giving as well. But our passage from Isaiah is much more than the simple notion of the joy in giving. Isaiah announces the joy of Christmas and of being a Christian. Isaiah is speaking prophetically about Israel and about every one of us right here in the Grace Lower Stone Reform Church. You know, like Israel, we have our problems. We're exiled in, in different ways. Um, 
we have our sin, we have our impure natures, uh, we aren't totally honest, we aren't totally pure, we don't practice what we preach, we are unfaithful, we're sinners, we look exactly like who we are, and that's humans. But with our gift of Jesus Christ, through faith, we will become different people, my friends. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Well, you know, he makes an allusion, Isaiah does, to wedding days. And wedding days in the, those days of Isaiah are similar to the days that we have now when we have weddings. Grooms, they'll put on special clothes, perhaps a tuxedo. The, the, the bride will put on a beautiful wedding gown. We have vows and, and other beautiful things that, that happen on that day. It's sort of like the day when uh, we will be happy forever moments happen on a wedding day. And of course, um, life goes on and not every moment is like that, but we look back to that wedding day. And we look back to what we said and how we look, and we are reminded of all the good things that were promised uh, on that day. And, and, um, and so it's sort of a memorial. Now, Christmas Day is like all of our wedding days for us Christians. It's a day that we take a, a pause and look back, and we think about our Christian experience. And so, I ask you, you know, to reflect, have you moved from darkness to light? The Christian message in Isaiah and proclaimed in the scriptures says this, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. If you and I believe that Jesus is God, who came down from heaven, born of the Virgin on Christmas Day, to give us the righteousness that we don't have, we move into the Christian experience. If you and I realize we're unable to do this on our own, to get these new clothes that Isaiah talks about on our own, and we don't put our faith um, in anything else other than Jesus, we move from darkness into light. And so this is our faith experience, and it's also our joy experience because we hear, as Isaiah says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. Isaiah, Isaiah is proclaiming the joy that we have in our redemption in our Savior who was born unto us. And, you know, we haven't seen Jesus Christ. We only have these, you know, these icons or images of him but though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. We are like the jailer that we read about in Acts of the Apostle, who in that terrible moment said to St. Paul, what must I do to be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and at the end of the day, that jailer was filled with joy because he had experienced the Christian experience and moved into that journey that we're in. Well, Isaiah gives us more about the Christian experience. We have joy because we will be clothed with righteousness. And it's the Lord who does this for us. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Now Isaiah mentions Zion, and Zion is symbolic for the people of God. Likewise, Jerusalem, which literally means the city of peace, is the city of God's people. We right here at Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church, along with these symbols, Zion and Jerusalem, are God's people. And while we may not look like our best now, uh, this is what 
Isaiah proclaims for us. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Well, we aren't there yet, friends. And, and uh, we still look pretty human right now. We still have our sins and our, our ways, but we have joy in the promise and redemption of Jesus Christ because we have believed in him. And he is working in you and me, and we will be dressed in those wonderful clothes of, of righteousness. So the challenges that I have in this, this reminder of joy are first to, to, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to contemplate the joy that we have in our salvation. You know, sometimes we aren't joyful and sometimes we aren't thankful because we just don't even think about how blessed we are. And so joy can be something and gratitude can be something that we in, can influence by consciously thinking, gee whiz, I didn't realize that. You know, I don't take that, I take that for granted. So we, we contemplate these things. And so we can influence our attitudes. But there is also joy as a gift. And we do know from the scriptures that joy in a divine way is a gift to us. St. Paul talks about the fruits, fruits of the Spirit, um, which are um, um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you know, if you become a Christian, you don't get this basket of fruits that just gets dumped on you and you don't become a changed person right away. I believe um, there's some, some nuances to that scripture. We may mature in different ways and we may receive some of these gifts in different ways, but I think that we can say for certain joy is definitely a gift that comes to us. You know, this is part of what we do in the Christian journey. We become Christians and we pray to God as we, tr you know, this is a good daily, a central prayer request. I need to be different than who I am. My heart needs to be different than what it is. And that's central to prayer and scripture reading for us to be different people, to be like Christ. And so that's in our pray prayers. And then um, in the Christian life, what happens is this. We change, and prayer changes us, if, if, if we're following it sort of in the, in the way we should, and um, we yield to, the, to the, the Holy Spirit. You know, we become more obedient people. That doesn't mean we become perfect people. We become more controlled by the Holy Spirit if we are progressing in our Christian lives. And so I think as we progress in our journey, we will receive more and more fruits from the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's sort of the journey, and that's, that's, uh, that's, the, that's what we, we receive joy as a gift in that journey. Now, we all know that in the world, we can have joy in a lot of things. Um, we can have joy when we, when we have a big accomplishment, or when something very pleasant happens, a graduation or a, a wedding or you know, any list, the list goes on. But I tell you, and, I, and I, um, I'm not alone, and I think you know this truth, that the joy that is given to us from God transcends every joy of this world. I mean, we, we get joy here, but God's blessings, the, God's joy is um, much greater than earthly things. And the psalmist gives voice to this. He gives voice, number one, that it's a gift from God, that God gives it to us, and that it's better than whatever is in this world. The psalmist says, you have filled my heart 
with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, my friends, in the Christian journey, or not even in the Christian journey, we don't live in a real joyful world. There are, there's definitely times when things aren't going well. Uh, Isaiah and the scriptures proclaim about our salvation in Christ that although we live in this unjoyful world, we should focus on that joy. And we can get diverted from our joy as we just lament our, our troubles and our sinfulness. And there is a, a, a prayer from the Psalms that's very appropriate with what I'm talking about, the unjoy of our existence, the unjoy of our world, but that special joy that we proclaim. So as the psalmist, you may have even prayed this prayer as well. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me <clears throat> and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. We have our troubles, we have our imperfections, but we are the recipients of the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven for us, who was born of the Virgin on Christmas Day, and we may forget this from time to time. We remind ourselves of this gift and this joy, and especially we do so in the Christian, uh, I mean, the, in the Chris, Christmas day. So we travel the Christian journey in faith, hope, and love, and we proclaim along with Isaiah the prophet, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. So Merry Christmas, my friends, and Happy New Year. We will turn to a perfect hymn for, for this time of the year, for, I mean for, for a new year, and that is Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. It's on page 686. Let's rise to sing that closing hymn.
May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rain fall gently on your fields. And may, and until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his eyes upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you.